The Blomen Voss BV-155 was a German high-altitude interceptor that first flew towards the end of World War II. Early in 1942, reports of a new American bomber's capabilities reached the Third Reich, prompting a meeting between the German Air Ministry officials and Messerschmitt and Focke-Wulf representatives to present two requirements for a special high-altitude fighter and a special carrier single-seat fighter. The Focke-Wulf TA-152H was developed as a result of Focke-Wulf's interest in high-altitude fighters. Messerschmitt planned to convert the famed BF-109G to the carrier deck. This new aircraft was first known as the BF-109ST before being renamed the ME-155. They proposed three ME-155 versions with various engines. The DB-605 engine powered the A version, the DB-628 powered the B version and the UMO-213 powered the C version. These versions were created to satisfy both needs. Messerschmitt was developing a significant number of aircraft at the same time including the ME-309, ME-262 and ME-163 Comet. The SNCAN was building aircraft in Paris to relieve the overburdened firm, but development was slow owing to the French lack of willingness to assist the Germans. By early 1943, the battles of Stalingrad and Al Amin had altered the terrain, tipping the balance from the favor of the Germans. The German Air Ministry halted development on the aircraft carrier Graf Zeppelin in 1943, resulting in the cancellation of the carrier bone fighter ME 155. The high altitude fighter project made little headway during the first half of 1943, but a project known as P 1091 ultimately emerged. On June 26, 1943, the Messerschmitt firm presented this concept to the German Air Ministry along with the need for extra workers. The Hamburg-based Blomen Voss company, which had no expertise in designing fighter aircraft, came to the rescue. On August 20, the German Air Ministry handed over the P-1091 stationary design work to Blomen Voss and renamed it ME-155B. However, tensions arose because the leadership at Blomen Voss suspected Messerschmitt was withholding information. This resulted in a particularly unpleasant episode in November when a delegation from Blomen Voss travelled across the country to meet the Messerschmitt only to learn that the appointment had been postponed. This strained their relationship even worse. In February 1944, the project M155B1 was redesignated BV155A. Dr. Richard Watt, the program's chief designer, opted to construct the B variant with a huge number of changes. The basic characteristics of the design were established in April and the first prototype was finished in December 1944. However, due to wartime delays, the first prototype was only built in December 1944. The project was dubbed Karawanka after a mountain range on the austria slovenia border. The BV-155 took to the skies for the first time on February 8, 1945. However, the flight was cut short owing to the issues with the right radiator. The second trip, two days later, was more successful, although various difficulties were discovered. The third flight on February 28 was a failure and crashed five minutes after takeoff. The British Army occupied Hamburg and the Blomen was factories on May 3rd discovering the BV-155 second prototype, which was halfway completed. It was taken to the United Kingdom, where it was displayed at the German aircraft exhibition at Farnborough, before being exported to the United States, where it sat in containers for several years. Finally, it was relocated to National Air and Space Museum's Paul E. Garber Repair Facility. The Plan C variant did away with the wing mounted radiators and consolidated everything under the nose with a chin air intake matching that of the P-40s. The C was to be the production variant with 27 C-0 pre-production aircraft scheduled when the war in Europe ended. The BV-155B1 was a cutting-edge aircraft with features such as an ejection seat, armored pressure cabin, wing fire extinguishers, servo-operated ailerons, a four-bladed VDM-9 propeller, laminar airflow type wings, a 130mm MK-108 cannon firing through the engine and two wing mountain 20mm MK-151-20 cannons. Armament consisted of 130mm MK-108 weapon firing into the engine 
the MK-108 weapon was to be replaced with the bigger and longer MK-103 cannon. The BB-155 was a single-engine piston-power aircraft capable of 430 km per hour at sea level and 690 km per hour at an altitude of 16 km. It had a maximum takeoff weight of 6037 kg, a top speed of 430 km per hour at the sea level and a service ceiling of 16.95 km. This height placed it among the highest flying aircraft of the World War II, especially given it was a single-engine piston-powered aircraft. The wings of the BV-155 were extended with a span of 20.33 meters and a wing area of 38.5 square meters. The heathering area of the American F-6 Hellcat was 37 square meters, 7.5 less than of the BV-155. With a ratio of 10.74, the wings had an extremely high aspect ratio. The American U-2 spy plane like the BV-155 had a comparable ratio of 10.3. Wings using this platform had outstanding lift-to-drag ratios, but they also had downsides including a low roll rate, which is common in fighter aircraft wings. Blauman was created some of the most stunning designs during the World War II, including the asymmetric BV-141 and the massive BV-222. Dr. Richard Ward was one of the scientists transported to the United States as a part of Operation Paperclip, and he worked for organizations such as the United States Air Force and firms such as Boeing until 1966 when he retired. The BV-155's tail is typical of the Nazi Germany's last days and some truly unique weaponry being pushed through. The necessity for a high-altitude interceptor designed for altitude exceeding 12,000 km was debatable, although several Allied reconnaissance planes were capable of flying to those heights. Thanks for watching. I have more similar videos on my channel that you may like. See you guys in the next video.